Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and double honor to my apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the elect. Okay, this is the brother Kassad back at it to bring out the word of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which is the true name of who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus. Okay. This video will be entitled On Standby for Yahweh Shai. Okay. And to begin this video, I wanted to look up the phrase on standby. Okay. And the meaning of on standby, according to Merriam Webster dictionary, it says ready for ready or available for immediate action. Okay. And the scriptures tell us to be ready because the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you think not. Okay, so we got to always be ready and prepared for the coming of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and it says available for, for immediate action. Okay, because right now is not the time to take physical action upon or, or take vengeance upon our adversaries, man. The scriptures say, wait ye upon the Lord. Okay, the scriptures say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay. Um, you know, and also we're supposed to have the wisdom and knowledge to understand that our our top adversaries, which is the nation of Edom, all right, they're in their blessing. All right, their blessing being the sword. When you go back to the book of Genesis, okay. That that blessing being the um the sword, okay, and through his blessing, which eventually is going to expire, okay, he, he's able to keep us under subjection, man. He has, you know, I'm talking about the so-called white man. He has military um, weaponry that 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 um, we're unable to, to, to stand against, man. All right? That's why we need divine intervention. And that's why the scriptures tell you in the curses in Deuteronomy 28th chapter that no man shall buy you or redeem you or save you. Okay, so we got to wait upon the Lord. So with that being said, and we got to be on standby, okay? Because the time is going to come when Yahweh Shai returns. And once Yahweh Shai returns, all right, the Lord is going to raise up his, 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 um, his men, the house of David, the elect, all right, that spiritual army, man. And then them fishers that's out here on the streets, they're going to be turned hunters, man. All right, and the scriptures like the like the scriptures say, the book of Jeremiah, the most high will use us to, to break in pieces these nations, man. But that's once the Howard Shah returns, man. Then the saints shall take the kingdom. But um to, to uh the first scripture I want to bring out is Zephaniah chapter three, verse eight. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, save Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Okay, so Yahweh Bashemel Shai is going to rise up to the prey. Not us. Okay? The scriptures say vengeance belongs to the Lord. All right? Best believe we want to get our revenge as well, but it's not about us, man. It's about the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai being glorified, magnified. All right? And, you know, see, that's the thing, man, because you got a lot of these camps out here. All right? They're not portraying the proper image, man. Okay, the scriptures talk about giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So our job is to what? You know, our job is to appear as spiritual because we're supposed to be spiritual. Okay, you're not supposed to be um portraying this carnal image, man. We got guys posing on the internet with uh, guns, putting up videos of, of uh, guns, going to the shooting range. Ain't nothing wrong with doing that type of stuff, but you, don't, you ain't supposed to be taking pictures and, and, and putting it on social media and, and on YouTube. And you know, putting you know, putting the videos up of you doing those type of things, man. That's something you want to do in your personal life. Go ahead and do it, okay. But that's not the image you're supposed to portray when when um you out there representing your Habba Shem Yahushai, okay. You know, but um, it said the Most High your Habba Shem Yahushai is gonna rise up to the prey. The scripture said the Lord shall fight for you, man, okay. You know, and what proves that. We cannot deliver ourselves is that you know the history okay we could go into 
different um different mighty men that rose up even in modern times man you know you hear about guys like um nat turner okay nat turner you know which he was a slave that eventually learned how to read and he read the scriptures and he woke up and realized that you know they were being um oppressed okay he just got tired of it and he tried to liberate his people all right but he eventually that eventually came to naught all right then you read the scriptures all right you hear about um guys like um like uh like thutis all right you know the, all of those you know people that rose up against the uh, roman empire during you know going back two thousand years ago all right uh judas the, the galilean okay you know that's all of, that's going into the secular history you know um they they tried to fight against the roman empire but they eventually you know um they eventually uh got put to death man okay and their their uh imaginations of you know um overthrowing the roman empire came to naught okay even you had uh one of the disciples man um um judas iscariot man you know he he, he tried to uh, force the lord's hand which you you can't force your how about shimmy outside's hand man okay and that's what leads me to this scripture right here. Let me get it real quick. Let me get it real quick. Bear me for a second. All right. Um, Songs of Solomon, chapter two, verse seven. It says, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the roses and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Okay? And the daughters of Jerusalem is talking about you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. It said that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Till he please. Okay, that's talking about the most high. All right? So, you know, you don't try to force the Lord's hand like like uh, Judas Iscariot did, man. Okay? Don't try to force the Lord's hand like the Zealots did going back 2,000 years, years ago. You know, during the time of uh, when the Roman Empire was, was uh, we had, had, had the nation of Israel in captivity. Okay? Even though, you know, those same spirits that were forcing the Lord's hand are back here today. Okay, but this message is not for them. This message is for the elect. Okay. Um, so that was it on that. Bear with me for a second. As I get this next scripture. Um, let me pull it up. Let me pull something up now. Yeah, this is Luke chapter 12, verse 42. It says... Luke chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Now let's look at that word steward in the Greek. The word steward in the Greek is oikon, oikonomos. Oikonomos. It says, definition, the manager of household or household affairs, okay, especially a steward, manager, superintendent, all right? So, right now, our job is what? To manage, to, to um, pretty much, like it says in the definition of steward in the Greek, it says the manager of a household, all right? So, so our job is to manage the household meaning what the lord gave us a job to and that that household consists of who the um the house of david the um the third temple which is the elect of the nation of israel man that's why the scriptures say the kingdom of heaven is in, is is within you all right because each member of the elect represent a stone or they're they're part of that that um that that spiritual temple man okay and it said 
Who then is that wise? Who then is is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Yeah, because right now our job is to, you know, feed feed the sheep, man. That's why Yahweh Shai told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. All right. And then feeding the sheep, that's synonymous with uh managing the Lord's household, man. Because those sheep represent the household. Because the sheep represent the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Which is Yahweh Shai's disciples, his servants. Okay. You know, and, and the ones that's already a part of the circumcision, a part of the circumcision that's already woken up, their job is to, you know, manage those that's coming in and, and be as examples to the flock, okay? Verse 43, it says, blessed is that man, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yeah, blessed is that man, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing, Okay? So when, when Yahweh Shai returns, all right, those that are found so doing, you know, um, the work, serving him, and how do you serve Yahweh Shem Yahweh By doing what Yahweh Shai told you to do. Go out to the highways and hedges, bid them to the marriage, endure to the end in doing so. Wait upon me. Wait upon Yahweh Shem Yahweh Okay? Um, like the scriptures say, um, Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. Okay? You know? So it's all about doing this work, man. It's all about feeding the sheep. Okay? And then feeding the sheep, that helps to further help seal the elect. Once the elect is sealed, then the end will come, man. Okay? We got to preach that gospel, man. You know? Like the Lord told his disciples to, to, to tell the Israelites, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what we're doing. Okay? And when Yahweh Shai returns, you want to be found so doing that, man. All the way up until the time where you can't teach anymore. Because there's going to come a time where you ain't going to be able to go out there and, and, and speak this word, man. Teach this word to the to the um, children of Israel. You ain't going to be able to you ain't going to be able to learn this word either. Okay? That's why it got to be within you, man. You're supposed to seek the Lord now while he may be found. All right. Um, no, it says Luke 19, verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they had because they thought that the kingdom of the most high should immediate, immediately appear. Yeah, going back to when Yahweh Shai was on the scene 2000 years ago. All right, you had a lot of Israelites thinking that uh, Yahweh Shai was going to um, take down the Roman Empire at that time. Okay, but, you know, they, they had to be uh, taught that, you know, it wasn't time for the Roman Empire to go down yet. All right. And it was more things that need to be, there was more prophecies that need to come to pass. Okay. And that's why the scriptures say there was going to be a fall in the way. All right. And that's why the Lord told uh, the Apostle John, the Revelator, that um, he was going to have to prophesy again. All right, mind you, he was up in age when he was on the Isle of Patmos. All right, so that's dealing with reincarnation. So the work wasn't finished. Okay. Verse 12, it says, He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive himself a kingdom and to return and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till I come all right so in other words those 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 ten those those um ten pounds represent what the knowledge that the Lord gave us man our our portion of, of the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of these scriptures man Okay, the gift that Yahweh Shemiah Shah blessed us with, all right, the scriptures say what? Um, to whom so much is given, to him much shall be required, man. All right, the Lord has given us, you know, this 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 understanding, which is power, man. 
And like, um, you know, the quote in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility, man. All right. Um, you know, and that nobleman represents Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. I'm going to read it again. It says, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. Okay. So we got to occupy until Yahweh Shemiah Shai comes, man. Okay. Meaning what? We got to work, man. Okay. We got to be occupied in this work, man. Okay. We got to, we got to, uh, you know, keep ourselves busy in, in, in this work, man. All right. It says, uh, verse 14, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. That's going into the two thirds. You know, they hate the Lord. They don't, they don't want Yahweh Shai to reign over them. All right, they got a problem with a so-called black man ruling, okay? Going and then, you know, those are those same spirits two thousand years ago, man. That that um had the Lord crucified, man. All right, that that um delivered them up to the Romans, okay? Verse fifteen it says, and it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, that he commanded these servants to, he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money and that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. All right. So in other words, you know, you were supposed to be occupied in his work to the, to the Lord came, man. Okay. You know, you, you had, you know, and, and being occupied in that work, you're supposed to produce fruit, man. Okay. You know, you're supposed to um have uh you know you know you know you're supposed to um have fruit, man. All right, all, all the work that we do, man, is supposed to um edify the elect. It's supposed to help further, you know, um bring more bring more um of the elect in. Okay. You know, because the scriptures say uh, the most high's word does not return unto him void, man. Okay. Uh, you know, our labors is not in vain, all right? Everything that we do, you know, people, you know, there's, 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 there's Israelites out there, there's Israelite men out there that, that see this, that see the works that we do, man, and, and they're going to eventually wake up and come into the fold, man, okay? Because that's what it's about. It's about, you know, helping the elect wake up, man. It's, it's, it's about, um, you know, edifying, your, it's about feeding the sheep, Okay? You know, um, teaching, want, giving warning to the Lord's people, man, and also giving them understanding, help help them draw out this knowledge, man, helping them wake up to who they are. Okay. And um, the next scripture I got is uh, James chapter five, verse seven. It says. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he hath received the early and latter rain. Okay? So, you know, we're likened unto husbandmen. You know, husbandmen is is uh, someone that deals with, um, you know, uh, tilling the land. Okay? you know, uh, planting, all right, and, and um, like the scriptures say, man, you know, we, we, we sow in that seed, man, all right, into, into the field, man, all right, the field being what? The world, man, all right, we're teaching this gospel all, you know, and like the scriptures say, this gospel shall be preached throughout all the world, man, okay, you know, that, that seed being the word, man, okay, we're pushing out that, that word, we're pushing the word, the Bible, all right, the word of Yahweh Shai, by the way, the internet throughout the whole world, man. All right, and that's how the elect are waking up, man. And you got Israelites waking up all around the world, and that's why the end is coming, man. Okay, but you know, a husbandman he has to be patient for those fruits to um to sprout. Okay, you know, he doesn't. 
you know, he's not going to um, till the land. He's not going to plant those seeds and expect it to uh, grow the next day, man. No, you know, like it says right here, he had long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain, man. Okay. So you got to be patient. All right. It says, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Okay? So we got to be patient. All right? The scriptures say, no man knoweth when the Lord comes, but we know that that time is close because we see the signs of the coming of the Lord, man. We see this place going down. We see the dollar collapsing. All right? We see, fat, we see shortages of food, which is eventually going to lead to the prophecy of the famine. All right? We see wars and rooms of wars. All right? What's going on between Russia and Ukraine? Okay, you know, and not just over there in Russia and Ukraine, but the Middle East. All right, you know, you got Israel and Iran, you got Syria, and um, you know, the U.S. Okay, and and so forth and so on, man. Okay, we see all these signs, man. They're supposed to be like a um blood moon, if not tonight, it was the night before. All right, and there's always blood moons and and and, and solar. Solar, uh, uh, solar eclipses, okay, you know, all these different signs in the heaven, man, chariot sightings, okay, these are all signs, man, so, with that, I'm gonna bring out one more scripture, this is Baruch chapter 4, verse 25, it says, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay, so it says suffer patiently, man. All right. So we got to suffer and we got to be patient. We got to have patience. We got to be patient and, and, and endure those sufferings, man. Okay. The scriptures say prepare thy soul for temptation, man. Constantly endure. Okay. These are the conditions of the battle, man. All right. It's a spiritual battle. Okay. The scriptures say without chastisement, you can you cannot be one of the Lord's ch uh, children, man. You can you, you're, not, you're not the elect if you don't have chastisement, man. You're, you're a bastard, okay. The Lord the Lord is not gonna put you through anything that's that's not gonna be able for you to, to uh, deal with, man. Okay, the Lord knows every one of us, man. He knows what we can deal with and what we cannot deal with. All right. However, we this is not our rest. All right, and the servant is not above his master. Yahweh Shai had to suffer, okay. But yet, guess what? Yahweh Shai endured it, man. All right, so we gotta suffer and we have to endure. Okay, it says, "For for thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck." Yeah, the scriptures say the triumph the triumphing of the wicked is short. Okay. So that's why it says right here, shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. Okay. You know, and we're going to get our vengeance. We're going to get, we're going to be able to put hands and feet on our adversaries, man. But that time is not now. That's why we're reading the scripture. It says, suffer patiently. Okay. Because we're being persecuted. All right. We're being oppressed. All right. We're, we're being, um, we're being uh, slaughtered, you know, physically, spiritually, okay? You know, we're being preyed upon, but we're going to get our, we're going to get ours, we're going to get our get back, man. We're going to get our payback, man. But we have to wait on Yahweh Shai once Yahweh Shai returns, man, okay? You know, we got to be patient, we got to be on standby, man, okay? So, um... With that, I'm going I'm to I'm close. I'm going to say all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Kakwadash. All right, Shalom to the elect. Shalom.